Welcome back to Imperial Splendor. Well, it seems that utilitarianism has been discovered. Let's end the game right now. All right, folks. Time to, of course, approach um, and uh, and get started here. Now, we do have some interesting things going on. For those of you that missed it in the last episode, we were lucky enough to get peace with Austria, an honorable peace with Austria, being able to even keep Lenberg and Galicia under our control. They do, however, have Ukraine, which is frustrating to say the least. But really, what we're trying to do is break through here, get Crimea, and move up through Ukraine. So for now, we'll allow them to have this somewhat beefy area south of Moscow. But the issue we have now are our subjects in Kurlan. Now remember, these guys used to work for us. They used to be our allies. And now they dare to turn against us. So we absolutely have to teach them a lesson. And that's going to require, of course, getting quite a large army together. Now many of our armies are beaten up from the massive campaigns, of course, um, against the Austrians. So we are going to try to build up basically a new army. Um, I'm going to get some cannons in this army, quite a few Grenadierski Polk and Mushtevski Polk. So just make sure that this has a beefy front line. Next turn, I'm going to start building some buildings, but we really do need to, to get an army up, period. Um, in fact, we might just merge some of these units together. We'll move this army to the north, and hopefully next turn, he'll be prepared to go ahead and attack Yelgava Kurland. Uh, we've got to be able to shut these guys down because, again, they've... They've just been disrespectful to us, period. Uh, we can't have that. So actually, we do have a quite a large army here. I didn't even notice these guys moving up to St. Petersburg. What I'm going to do, actually, let's face it, we, we need to focus on our buildings. We haven't done that at all, almost at all. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and upgrade to the Imperial Palace here in St. Petersburg. Also considering the enemy is so close to our actual capital here in Moscow. Um, no, never mind. St. Petersburg is our capital at this time. Even better. Um, so we can really, you know, just basically support uh, this particular city as much as possible and really make sure that this is a strong capital. And how can we have a strong capital with enemies at our doorstep? So that's not going to be allowed. We're going to shut them down, boys. Let's end it here. And again, just one city to take down. I think if we can shut them down here, all of our problems with Kurland go away. The question is whether to make them subjects as they were before or whether to just go ahead and gobble them up into the greater Russian Empire. And at this point, with that sort of uh, shamefulness on their part, I think we have no choice. We must attack for good. Here we go. What are they going to do? All right, they're still not moving out of that area. That's the one bit of good Rioting news. Has broken out so in this region as the let's go ahead. We do have some rioting in Galicia. We'll respond as needed. In fact, we can go ahead. Uh, I guess we could send the secondary army down there. Although it's really not the best time. What I will do is put my spy in. And I don't think the spy actually affects the political situation. But nonetheless, we're going to do it. Um, and as you can see, this is not a full army. But we are going to Jelgava Kurland. We're going to continue this siege. And hopefully force the Kurlandis to head outside and face us. In the meantime, I'm going to take another army, and I am going to head south. Because my thinking is that if we can get here to Lenberg um, in Galicia, we can shut down that revolt before it even begins. Or at the very least, we can respond to it now. So we're leaving Vilnius, Lithuania. Let's hope there's no um, armies behind us. And there are some towns here with manufactories, water-powered cloth mills, things like that. That's what I'm trying to fix right now. The steam engine factories, anything that is going to increase our overall revenue per turn. Just take a look here. Make sure everybody is orthodox. That's another big issue. So Tataria is, of course, the Tatars. It's only 76% orthodox. Um, let's move over here to Belarus and start converting the Catholics. Okay, let's see if they'll attack us. Again, we don't have a full army, but they just have one class of unit in that army, which makes me feel a little bit more confident. Although they do also have a lot of artillery, some ca I don't know, that might not have been my, my greatest move. But we'll see how we do against this massive army. Let's not forget that we also have forces in St. Petersburg, should we choose to use them. 
Well, this is the moment of truth, my friends. It's Count Zhakar Chernikov against Leonard Belzer. And I must say, the enemy certainly outnumbers us by quite a margin. 2,325 men. We slightly outnumber the enemy in artillery. Um, and in terms of cavalry units, I think we're about evenly matched. We've got three cavalry units, including our general, which doesn't count. There's only six units in Chernikov's force. Again, he's been through a lot of combat with the Austrians, but thankfully a majority of his army, with the exclusion of actually a cavalry unit and two infantry units, we do have them at full strength. And as you can see here, this is an army that has seen combat. Their experience is substantial. So I'm hoping that that is going to help us get a victory against the Corlandis. Let's hope for the best, my friends. What a beautiful battlefield. So, of course, we are facing the town itself. Um, we're just going to go ahead, deploy all of these artillery pieces, and pretty much prepare. Um, I expect this to be a pretty dramatic fight. But who knows? You know, maybe it's not going to be that dramatic at all. Um, and I want to just take a look. Our cavalry are going to be over here. So we're basically dedicating them all to one area. I just think that's the right approach. What can I say? Um, we'll see what the enemy sends at us. And we'll decide from there whether or not we made the right decision. Here we go. Cordelon approaches. All right. Well, the artillery at least is being fired pretty damn quickly. It seems to be quite effective. Let's get an eye there. We'll also keep an eye on the enemy's right flank um, to make sure there's no cavalry coming through. Fired! Beautiful! Alright, already some devastating blows there to that front line. If, if I was able to, actually I was going to say, get behind the wall, well you know what? We could actually, for really fast... And this might actually be a poor use of our men, but I'm going to try to get one of our groups over here because I see enemy cavalry approaching. Um, so I'm actually going to go for those hussars um, with the cavalry, and I'm going to try to set up a line behind the wall with these infantry. Dragon Skipwalk. They know what's up. Get them. Come on, boys. Nice! Immediately decimated that front line. There we go! Look at how quickly we knocked them down, guys. I mean, our cavalry units are just, each time, more and more amazing. Uh, what I will do is try to get the infantry over here, because now the enemy's a lot closer, and it looks like they're smart enough to actually get away from that wall. They know the danger it poses. So I'm going to march forward, um, and I am going to try and take out the artillery. The problem is they've now got their Dragoon regiments behind. So you know what? No, we're going to fall back. Fall back. Fall back. This is a trap. It's a trap! Let's get over here. I'm just going to let them approach our front line. And again, we're not going to get that chance to get behind the wall. So I'm just going to start firing from here. Uh, these guys are going to be the first units in combat. The Semlovievsky bulk. Double quick, boys. Double quick. Oh, man. They're definitely having some issues with formation. Let's... There we go. That should do it. Let them have it, boys. by rank. That is just so cool. And now let's turn back. I'm starting to see that enemy artillery get a little squirrely. I'm going to rush back and try to target it. And there we go. That is the enemy approach, guys. Here we go. We should have switched to canister shot. Canister shot. Boom! Boom! Oh, yes! Keep it up, boys. Keep it up. This is the fight for Cordelond right here. We might shoot our own men, but I think it's important to start firing here. 
hopefully that those artillery guys are working overtime. Here we go, come on! Fire! Oh, this is gonna be fun. It didn't seem to affect him all that much. Maybe at this distance, they're past the useful range. In other words, they're like in our line. We, I know we can't see that here, but um, in terms of the battle, they seem to be like in our line. Let's have these guys focus over here on the Deutsche Line Infantry to our west. And let me see if I can qu quickly, quickly grab those um, cavalry units. Sorry, the infantry can keep on fighting. But I want to bring these cav and bring them over here. Not sure we should charge the enemy, but we need to do something to even up the numbers here. So you know what? It is time to bring in the Dragunski Polk. Let's go for it. I don't think they're expecting it. We're going to go for a charge of this Deutsche Line Infantry unit. In fact, I'm even going to charge with the... Uh, never mind. I was going to charge with the infantry, but there's still a lot of other Deutsche Line Infantry units here. So let's just head in with the cavalry. Alright, now let's focus at the on uh, the enemy right there on the line. Trying to get these cavalry away to get a second charge attack. And really just maximize the damage there. But look at this, right on the front lines, things are hectic, and our general is in grave danger. He's got four cavalry left here, but I think one more um, shot, he's going down. In fact, I'm tempted to go ahead and charge the enemy here with the Admiraletsky Battalion, um, if it weren't for the massive amount of enemy forces that remain right in front of us. So many enemies left, just so many. And at this point, I'm keeping the cavalry in there for the rest of the fight. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just to take out the Deutsche Line Infantry. I'll rush back, back and forth to kind of get the charge bonus. But besides that, um, I'm not going to mess around. You can see some of them getting into square formation, but not all have the wherewithal to do that. Which gives our boys a few chances to swing away here at the enemy. Look there in the center. Look at that, guys. Look at our center. It is falling apart. We're going to have to bring the boys in. Hurrah! Bayonets! This is what you're here for, boys. Yep, we're going to have to go straight bayonets. It's getting medieval. It's getting medieval, boys. But it must be done. that our general is also almost dead. I'm going to move him back here. Um, looks like we've got one enemy group falling back, but look at what it took, guys. I mean, it took so much just to win this, uh, this first part of the battle. We still have plenty to fight. Um, plenty of enemies approaching over here and back here as well. Man. At some point, we have to make the decision whether or not to retreat with our general. But what I'm going to do is actually move his command post for lack of a better term, uh, all the way over here near this lone tree. Let's see how we're doing against the enemy. The enemy infantry, I should say. Now, it, it's interesting because these guys have actually gotten most of their units, um, not by accident, but, but just because of the region they're in, from um, the, re the same region of... Uh, Oh, damn, we got Corlandese behind us. Um, the same region of our allies, the Prussians. So a lot of these units are Prussian Deutsche units, um, and they're doing quite well. So this is maybe a tiding of things to come, a, a sign of things to come in the future uh, when facing the Prussians, that they're going to send this kind of thing against us. But look at that. So we're already getting shot at, and the general is, yeah, he's running away. And this is the right move by Count Chekhar. Uh, I think this might be our first major defeat, as a matter of fact, guys, if we don't do something soon. 
Um, I, I don't think there's much we can do, as a matter of fact. So all these veterans from previous wars against the Austrians are going to be falling under the Cordelandese. But at least they fought to the last man, and we're certainly going to have to come back here with another army. Let's be honest, we couldn't afford a lot of those officers' wages anyway. So a little tongue-in-cheek benefit, uh, in a way. Come on, come on, boys. At least damage their army as much as possible. Yeah, they have got us completely surrounded. Um, hopefully Count Jacar got away. He was the only man in his entire um, group there that survived. So hopefully he did survive. In fact, one of them, look at that, still holding onto the flagpole, and his arm is still waving in the cold wind. That's pretty horrifying, I have to say. Pretty, extremely horrifying, maybe. It's gonna be it for the boys. Two groups left. And the Deutsche Line Infantry absolutely crushed us here. Just really goes to show you the, uh, the strength of that particular unit. Uh, I'm going to even these guys out and see if we can't set up the best defense possible, pro uh, basically. But, you know, we're, we're not at a point where we can call this a good defense, a superior defense or anything. And there we go. All the boys retreating. It had to happen at some point, And this is our first defeat, guys. Many brave Russians falling this day. Now, if we got out with the general, great, um, but we're going to have to probably bring that army back, so let's hope that nobody revolted. Um, and the Corlandese, since they're in their capital there, they're going to be able to uh, to get those units back pretty quickly. Um, that's something to keep in mind, you know. Oh, and that was a successful mission, so you know what? In somehow, by moving in that unit, did we... What did we do here? Oh, no. We, have, we might have a potential game bug. <laughs> uh, Austria is red <laughs> okay um but i think we actually stopped the rebellion in galicia in fact i don't have any sort of reference to rebellion here beautiful so we're going to immediately head back uh up here what have we gotten here so this is the army count chakara's army i'm going to get him back into there vilnius lithuania and i'm going to move peter peshkov to the north again but what we really need to do is get an entirely new force uh going over here so we can actually start fixing these guys but I think we're going to need, um, you know, fresh troops, basically. Guys that have not seen combat yet. I'm going to also, before I forget, let me get recruits there for our generals. Unfortunately, you guys saw that. It was 1,000 just to outfit our general units. So it's not cheap to outfit these general units at all. Um, we do, of course, have this army in St. Petersburg. We could rush down with it. But I think our best bet is to use Peter Peshov, another one of our heroes from the Austrian Wars, and uh, just send him in with some fresh troops. Anyway, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching this series. Please continue hitting that like button, dropping a comment down below, and subscribe if you are new. Um, I try to always put the next series down below as a pinned comment. So if you've had trouble or difficulty finding, you know, the subsequent series, um, just check, you know, just check through my videos, my recent videos. You, it will be there, I promise you. Thank you so much, guys. Take care. I'll catch you on the next one.